let's do some more practice, okay? Um, if we take a look, I won't bother writing down the rules again here because you should know them by now. Um, let's take a look at this function, g of x equals to um, x squared times 4 minus 3x. Now, the way it stands right now, this function, you can't do the derivative of it, um, at least not with what we've talked about so far. Later on, we're, gonna, we're going to learn something called the product rule, and this is a product, isn't it? We have this function times this function. So later on, we'll learn how to do the derivative of this using the product rule, but right now, um, this function needs to be kind of worked on a little bit, kind of needs to be prepared before we can start to do its derivative. And really all we should do is, why don't we just multiply this out? Let's distribute this across, get rid of all these brackets, and um, that then we'll be able to do the derivative. So x squared times 4 is 4x squared. x squared times negative 3x is minus 3x cubed. And now it's in a good shape because it's a difference of two functions. Each of those functions is a constant times a power. So we can do the derivative using our rules, right? So the derivative is going to be... Um, it's going to be the derivative of the first minus the derivative of the second. Now, I'm going to do this the long way, and then I'm going to show you like a little shorter way. It's not much difference, but um, I think uh, you, you should really get used to doing it the shorter way. But I will do it the longer way just to just for this time to remind you of how it goes. So the derivative of this is going to be done by pulling out the constant 4 and then multiplying by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. And when, when we do the derivative of this, we're going to pull out the minus 3 and then do the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x squared. And then let's simplify. Um, 4 times 2 is 8x. And 3 times 3 is 9 x squared, okay? Now, alternatively, um, so we had, let's just, I'm just going to rewrite it here. This was what we had, right? To do the derivative, I kind of want to skip this step. Um, I don't, I don't need to write that every single time. The kind of the, the way to see this is we're going to multiply the coefficient times the exponent, right? Because you know the power rule. We bring that exponent to the front and then multiply it with the 4. So why don't we just do that in one step? You know, 4 times 2 is 8. And then bring down, bring down the power of 2 by 1 to make it a 1. And we don't have to write the 1. It's implicitly there. And over here, what do we have? We have 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. x to the power of 1 less than 3 is 2. Okay? Same answer, right? Except this way, we kind of skip this unnecessary step here. If you want to put this in, that's no problem. Uh, perfectly fine. But I want to kind of develop, uh, you know, the methods to get to the answer as fast as possible. And this is certainly acceptable to do it like this. You don't have to show this step. It's uh, it's just fine if you do, but it's uh, it's it's unnecessary. Okay. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say we take h of x is x minus 1 times x minus 2. So this is a product. We don't have the tools yet to find the derivative of a product. Um, so how about this? Let's simplify this function before we take the derivative. And let's do that by foiling this out. I don't know what term you called it. Um, so this would be like the first term here, x, x. Uh, x and minus 2, that would be your last term. These two, we call those the inner terms. And um, uh, let's see here. Sorry, this one's the last one, actually. These are the outer ones. It doesn't matter, these F-O-I-L. It's just, it's just a way to help students understand what to do. The way I think about it is... Everything from here has to be multiplied with everything from here, right? So when I do that, x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. 
negative 1 times 1x is negative 1x. I don't have to write the 1 in front of the x. And then negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Let's simplify that a little bit more before we take the derivative. Because minus 2x and minus 1x can, can be combined. And we get minus 3x plus 2. So again, we haven't taken the derivative yet. We've just prepared it to make it um, ready to take the derivative of. Because this is, this is now within the realm of our toolkit. Because this is a sum and difference of different functions. Each of these separate functions here, we know how to do the derivative of, right? What is the derivative of x squared? 2x. Now here I'm going to save myself some time. Instead of writing minus 3 bracket 1 bracket, the reason I say 1 is because the derivative of x is 1. I'm just going to do that kind of in my head. Um, minus 3 times 1 is minus 3. And the derivative of 2 is 0, so I'm not even going to write plus 0 because it doesn't achieve anything. And uh, we get to our answer in one step there, okay? All right, number 3. Um, why don't we try this one? y equals root x times x minus 1. So this is a product. Um, let's multiply it out like we've done in these other examples. How about before I do that, though, I change this as x to the power of a half. You know, really, when you do derivatives, it's often best to change any square roots or nth roots into fractional exponents because our power rule can then be applied, right? So let's now multiply this across. Um, you know, there's a, there's a hidden one here, right? When you multiply these two, you're, you're going to add the exponents, right? 1 half plus 1 is the same thing as 1 half plus 2 over 2, which is 3 over 2. So this is x to the 3 halves. <clears throat> and then this is minus x to the 1 half. And now we're ready to go with the derivative. This is 3 halves x to the 1 half, right? 3 halves minus 1 half is 1. Or, sorry, 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. And here is our good old square root function. We've done that derivative several times. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. And um, this one needs to be rewritten so that it has a positive exponent. So I'll recopy the first one. And I'll bring this down to the numerator. This answer is just fine. Um, if you wanted to write this, rewrite it again with roots, you can. It would be 3 halves, this is root x, right? Minus 1 over 2 root x. And both of these answers are acceptable. You know, it's kind of a weird thing. we got to get used to it, though. Usually if our question is given roots, we rewrite the roots as fractional exponents, do the derivative, and then often we go back to the root symbol again, okay? <coughs> it's just the way it is. Okay, so I hope you're pausing the video as we go and doing each question. Try to do each question by yourself. It's the only way to learn. Let's do this one. <coughs> uh, root x plus 1 over x cubed. Now, this is a quotient, right? Something over something. And later on, we will learn something called the quotient rule, which allows us to do the derivative of any quotient. But right now, we haven't learned that yet. So we need to work on this function a little bit to get it into a, a more friendly form that uh, our rules are going to apply to. Let's start off by writing this as x to the half. Now... I hope you know that uh, we can write this like this, right? We can kind of separate these fractions and go backwards. Instead of a, we're going to rewrite this as a sum of two different fractions. Get rid of the common, get rid of the common denominator and make two separate fractions. And now I'm going to subtract these, okay? One half minus three. What is that? 
Okay, how do we do something like this? Well, let's make 3 into a fraction by putting it over 1, okay? All allowed to do that, no problem. Um, we have a 2 and a 1. We need to get a common denominator. That's going to be 2, right? So both of these need to be out of 2. This one's already out of 2, so I'm just going to recopy that. Now, how do I get this here? Well, I just multiply this by 2, and I multiply this by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. <coughs> now we have a common denominator, and we can subtract, right? Get negative 5. All right, my, my fear is that you just type this into your calculator, 1 half minus 3, and your calculator just gives you the answer right away, and you don't know how to do it by hand. That's no good. You have to, if you're, if you're an expert at doing it from scratch like this, then you're allowed to use the calculator. But if you can't do this without the calculator, then you really need to work on that. Okay, so there we go. And right here, um, we're just going to bring this to the top, and it's become x to the minus 3. This function is now fully prepared, and it's ready to be differentiated. So it's minus 5 halves, x to the minus 5 halves minus 1, which is minus 7 halves. And here we have minus 3. Like, some people would write plus and then the minus 3, right? And then x to the whatever. But... Why, why write plus minus like that? Because that's just the same as minus, right? So let's just write minus, okay? Minus 3, x to the minus 3 minus 1 is minus 4. Um, basically, we're done. Let's, why don't we just put these to the denominator? So minus 5 over 2, x to the 7 halves, minus 3 over x to the 4th. I guess I could put a root sign there, but it doesn't matter. This is perfectly fine. So there's the answer to that one. A little bit more complicated. Let's try this one. Say, let's use some weird letters, okay? Let's say R of A equaling to 5A plus 2 squared. So this one here, we need to simplify first before we can do the derivative of it. Um, I'd be scared that some of you might write this. 5a squared is 25a squared plus 2 squared is 4. Do you think this is right? It's not, okay? Because we need to actually um, foil this out, right? Let's erase this. The way... The way the proper way to do this would be to uh, maybe, well, one way to do it anyways is to write it as 5a plus 2 times 5a plus 2. That's what that little square means, right? You're going to multiply this thing under the square by itself. And now let's foil this out here. Let's multiply this out, distribute it across. 5a times 5a, 25a squared. And look at this, 5a times 2, 10a, right? That has to be there. And here's another one, 2 times 5a is another 10a. And then we have 2 times 2 is plus 4. So, yeah, that those, those two terms, 25a squared is there and the 4 is there, but we also have these two other terms which we can't ignore. Um, so this is 25a squared plus 20a plus 4. Now we're ready to do the derivative. It's going to be easy. So I'm going to do the fast way, okay? 25 times 2 is 50. A to the power of 1. Don't have to write it. Plus 20 times the derivative of A. Well, just like the derivative of X is 1, the derivative of A is 1 in this situation. So this is 20 times 1, which is 20. And then plus the derivative of a constant, that's 0, right? So plus 0. And I don't have to write that because plus zero, well, that doesn't do anything. So there's my answer for that one. Um, why don't we squeeze in one more? Just do an easy one. Maybe some weird letters. How about S of capital R equals um, 4 pi 
R cubed. Or, well, it doesn't matter. Let's, yeah. Okay. So, pi here should be treated kind of like the 4, right? It's just a number. In some sense, this is a, this is a constant out front, right? And this is our variable cubed here. I'm going to use the power rule on that. This one doesn't need to be prepared. We can do the derivative right away. So by that rule that says if you have a constant times a function, all you do is you pull out the constant to the front and then multiply by the derivative of the function that's beside the constant. What's the derivative of r cubed? 3r squared. And then why don't we just multiply this across here. we got 4 times 3 is 12. So it's 12 pi r squared. And that's it. So that's, uh, that's a little bit more practice. The main point of this one is kind of, if you're given a product or a quotient, um, you can often just multiply it out and then do the derivative, okay? And like I said, right now, we don't have the product rule available to us or the quotient rule. So um, right now, this is the only way that you're, you would be able to find these derivatives. Later on, we're going to learn another way. But um, I think you understand what I mean. So maybe let's do a little bit more practice, and then we'll move on.